Avatar Frontiers of Pandora puts you in control of a Navi, tasks you with reclaiming the world of Pandora, and throws hundreds of enemies at you in the process, which is why going in eyes wide open with some valuable tips and tricks can make a huge difference. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're sharing everything we wish we knew sooner about Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. As always, these tips and tricks are meant to help new players take on the challenges of a game. Given that Frontiers of Pandora is a story-driven open-world game, our goal is to make sure there is absolutely no story spoilers in this video, so sit back and get ready to soak in some knowledge. If there's one thing that's going to hamper your progression early on, it's traversal. You start your avatar experience with practically nothing, learning to navigate Pandora by putting one foot in front of the other. Early on, you'll be limited to moving across the world on foot, and this can be a really slow process. That's why it's important to pay attention to the world around you and identify these blue plants that are often found on the ground and around large roots. These are called mist blooms, and while it might look dangerous, when moving through them, they release spores that temporarily increase Navi blood flow, improving overall speed and agility. By learning to identify these plants, you can easily get from point A to point B, escape pursuing enemies, and overall just elevate the experience getting around the world. Now, as you move across Pandora, it is inevitable that you'll run into enemies, and when the fighting starts, you better understand how to avoid taking damage. Your Navi actually has the ability to dodge, and that's a great skill to master early on in the game. By tapping the jump button during horizontal or backwards movement, you'll leap a short distance away, making it very easy to escape an enemy. This also works while holding the sprint button, slightly increasing the distance that you dodge. Finally, you can hold and release the jump button during the movement to increase the dodge distance further still. It's a simple technique, but one that can save your life during a fight. Speaking of traversal, it wouldn't be a Ubisoft game, or really any open world game, without fast travel points. Let me tell you guys, the world of Pandora is huge, so knowing where and how to activate these points in the game is a must. Luckily, you're introduced to the concept early on, and while it should be a no-brainer, open world games often overwhelm players with information, so let's make it clear. Once you've acquired your SID tool early on in the game, you'll be able to track down abandoned research stations. Using the tool, you can restore power to these locations, making them active again. Restoring power will give you the ability to activate side quests and will also reward you with some spare parts, which you can add to your reserves, helpful when crafting specialty arrows or purchasing higher tier gear. However, once you restore power, you can also use the abandoned research station as a fast travel point. Early game, end game, it really doesn't matter because as I said, Pandora is massive and having a network of stations online means easy access to the entire world. I should also point out that Navi clan camps scattered across the world also provide this benefit. Bottom line, as you're exploring Pandora, you should prioritize activating these, even if that pulls you away from your current objective. Trust me when I say this will save you a ton of time in the long run. Moving around Pandora is one thing. Knowing its secrets is another thing entirely. Throughout the world are various plants, and each enhances your skills in different ways. Not only is it important to identify these, but also to understand how they impact your gameplay experience long term. First are the all-powerful Tarsu plants. These are marked on your map from the very beginning, and you can even locate them through the map fog thanks to small beams of purple light. Finding these for the most part is relatively simple, but most are far removed from the main quest path. By finding Tarsu plants, you'll unlock specific ancestor skills, powerful upgrades that improve many of the aspects of your combat and traversal kit. One of our favorite abilities, Eject, allows the player to rip a soldier out of their amp suits. It's honestly a combat essential, and players can unlock this relatively early in the game to the southeast of the Aranahe clan's home tree. Give the map a good scan early on and identify what Tarsu plants are going to synergize with your preferred playstyle. Make it a point to unlock them as soon as you can, knowing they're going to elevate a huge aspect of the gameplay. While Tarsu plants drastically increase your capabilities, it's worth pointing out that smaller Tarsu saplings are also important, granting you a skill point each time you interact with these smaller plants. These are slightly harder to find, mainly because they're obscured by the fog of war, but once that's dispersed, you'll see markers on the map that will help you identify their location. Unlike Tarsu plants, the points you get for interacting with these saplings can be used in a more traditional skill tree system. There's nothing mind-blowing here, but the skills do increase your power level substantially, and a number of them provide some much-needed quality-of-life improvements. 
it's actually nice to see a skill tree system that provides some value on top of power increases, making both ancestor skills and standard skills worth investing in. Much like Tarsu plants, these saplings can also be found off the beaten path, out of reach, or even underground. There's one final piece of flora we should talk about, and that's the bell sprigs. These bulbous, green glowing plants grant you a permanent boost to your maximum HP, and while that might not sound that exciting, it's one of the only ways to increase your HP pool within the game. In our eyes, these are an essential pickup, as the combat portions of the game do get intense. Much like saplings, these can be identified on your map once the fog of war is lifted and can be found out in the open or hidden just out of sight underground. I do also want to point out that if any of these plants reside within a polluted zone, they will not be accessible. You'll first need to rid that zone of the pollution before you can interact with and collect these resources. If there's one thing we took for granted early on, it's the power of Navi Senses. This is a vital system that aids in everything from combat to gathering, and most importantly, helping identify the world around you. Simply put, the more you embrace its power, the more you get out of the system. While using Navi Senses, if you get close to something, especially if it isn't marked on your map, your vision will begin to glow with a purple halo. This becomes brighter while facing the direction of the important item or location and can be incredibly useful when trying to locate anything out of sight. Navi Senses allow you to locate things like bell sprigs, tarsu plants, or really anything that provides value to the player. Not only that, but if an item is obscured by the world, your Navi Senses still work and can help you identify things even if, for example, they're underground. Seriously, don't sleep on this important system as mastering your senses means mastery of the world of Pandora. One thing we love about Navi Senses is the ability to detect weak spots. Whether that be predator, prey, or amp suit enemies, your Navi Senses reveal the truth. And while you might be able to get away with spray and prey in a Far Cry game, that just won't cut it in Frontiers of Pandora. The game encourages you to adopt the ways of the Navi, which means a bit stealthier with an emphasis on stick and move guerrilla tactics. By scanning enemies with your Navi senses, not only are you adding information about your target to the hunter's guide, but you'll also be able to identify where a target is armored and more importantly, where their weak spots are. Locating these soft spots and knowing which weapon is the right tool for the job are two pieces of crucial information that not only make you a more effective hunter, but a better soldier as well. For example, hitting an enemy like the RDA amp suit on the head will just be a huge waste of ammo. Not only that, but the more you shoot, the more attention you attract, opening you up for a swift death. Instead, look for weak spots, typically on their back, and nailing these with a heavy bow will almost always see the unit explode immediately, causing confusion amongst the rest of the enemies. Now, when it comes to hunting, the same thing applies. Using the wrong weapon, like an assault rifle, or hitting the target with too many shots before killing it, will completely ruin the resource. In this case, not only are you wasting ammo, but you're also missing out on claiming the materials that creature would yield. The game wants you to lean into being a true Navi. Be merciful, execute a clean kill, and don't let the animal suffer, and you'll be rewarded with high-quality resources. As a member of the fabled Sorrentu clan, you're tasked with uniting the other Navi clans against the RDA, and that comes with some powerful perks. As you move around the world, completing quests, contributing resources to specific clans, and taking out RDA units, you'll accumulate clan favor. What we didn't know was that clan favor is actually earned as part of one giant pool across all clans. Using your favor, you can pick up key items from any of the major clans as rewards for your efforts, but there is a catch. You can actually cap your clan favor, and if that happens, your future endeavors that would normally grant you favor won't net you anything. That's why it's important to pay attention to the spiral in the clan contribution basket or the vendors in each clan. If that spiral fills up entirely, you're maxed out. I should note that you can actually augment the rate at which you gain favor with mods on your clothing, and getting these early on can significantly help your clan favor progression long term. Karanu's Weaving Strap, which is a chest mod, can be found at Karanu in the home tree of the Aranahe clan. This grants 10% additional clan favor from quests and activities. It does cost four full notches of clan favor to purchase. Akru's Ornate Bracelet, an arm guard mod, can be found at Akru in the Zeswas clan's camp. This also grants 10% additional clan favor from quests and activities. However, this does cost six full notches of clan favor to purchase. With the clan favor rolling in and a slew of powerful items now within reach, this is easily one of the best ways to get an edge over the RDA 
and elevate your gameplay. Let's not kid ourselves. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is a Ubisoft game, and that means premium currency, daily and weekly quests, and a whole lot of cosmetics. Now, the game is also first person, so this tip might not mean much to many of you if you simply don't care how your character looks, but even still, I did want to point it out. Throughout the world, primarily at major clan hubs, are quest givers that offer daily and weekly quests. These are relatively simple in nature and challenge you to defeat enemies a certain way or complete some other side activity. By doing so, you'll be rewarded with some in-game premium currency. As you might expect, accumulate enough of that currency and then you can pick up some cosmetic items. These will be available from the same NPC that assigns you the quest and will be pulled in on a rotating basis from the microtransaction store. This functions in a similar way to Retta from Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where his stock will rotate on a weekly basis. If you're someone that doesn't want to spend more money in a game that you already spent money on, and you'd rather grind out a few additional cosmetic rewards, well now you know what to look for. I will say, while you don't receive a huge reward for each daily or weekly quest completed, it does look like the rewards are slightly better tuned than in AC Valhalla. It's still a grind, don't get me wrong, Ubisoft never misses a chance there, but at least it's slightly more tolerable. Frontiers also features a transmog system at launch, which you can't say about every other Ubisoft game. When you go into your character screen, you can select a gear slot, toggle over to the cosmetics tab, and then all of the available visuals can be viewed. Select the one that works best for you and voila, you've got your desired knobby look. So there you have it. Everything we wish we knew sooner about Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. If you have any questions or want to share your favorite tips or tricks, do me a solid and leave a comment down below. Of course, if you found this video helpful, you already know what to do. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. You could also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free giveaways going on all the time. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.